So to take the theory idea and push it further, for me, television came along and furry animals whose mouth did that. Yeah. Then cartoons, which were very expensive to make, cartooning is a form of masking. Mm -hmm. It's a form of inanimate that we then believe in, Roadrunner. Cartoons then moved on television and became very, much cheaper and they were all over the place. And that's a kind of masking and a kind of puppetry in two dimension, mm -hmm. as it were. Then, and this is darker and darker for real blood puppetries or marionettes, then digitalization and, and digital created effects comes along. Mm -hmm. So I can, so now a video game now is a kind of digital puppetry, yeah. which is now flooding us with this kind of, but the root is the, something inanimate is representationally manipulated to be real as it were. Mm -hmm. So do you have hope for the future? Uh, I have nothing but hope for the future because puppetry gets spurts of attention and it's getting a spurt of attention right now. Um, anytime there's a big commercial hit, suddenly everybody's discovered puppets again. It happened with Lion King. You know, suddenly puppets are on the legitimate stage and puppets are big and, you know, and, you know, War Horse has been hugely successful. I think for every valid reason it should be and it looks beautiful and it couldn't have happened to a nicer group of guys, you know, the Handspring Puppet Theatre guys who are gentlemen and great artists, you know, I, I, you just get thrilled when that kind of success happens to really good people. But of course now, critics and the general public have discovered puppetry and puppetry is, for this moment in my life, all about horses, <laughs> you know. And I'm sure in five years it'll be about rhinoceros or emus or some new big commercial kind of puppetry. But I don't despair at all because I'm always asked, oh, with the digitalization of the world, do you think it's going to die out? What I've learned is I have an audience most nights who are longing to come into a room and have someone acoustically tell them a story. I have no microphone. I have no projections. I've got some figures on strings. We all know they're on strings. I'm not hoodwinking you that they're little people. Uh, in fact, I like that you see the strings. But I tell you an acoustic story, which is what puppetry is. It's, it started around tr tribal fires to reenact the hunt. And people drew things on cave walls. And then they started animating things to reenact the hunt. And that's the birthplace of my craft. But I'm basically telling people around a campfire every night an acoustic story. Right. And I think people are starving for more of that, more and more and more. So I don't, I don't worry about the continuation of theater or even my part of the theater. I think it's just all about, do you have a good story to tell? I think the appeal of puppetry, ultimately, is that it's a low art. You know, we try, some of us, to make it into a high art. It will never be ballet or opera or a certain kind of literature or, or, or you know, a certain kind of theater of, of the classics. It will never be, even though a lot of puppeteers try and do Shakespeare. And, uh, it's a low art. I'm a Punch and Judy man. And, you know, when you talk about the dark Ronnie and my themes, I'm that guy in the village square beating the crap out of the devil. <laughs> I really am. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to show you the end of civilization. It doesn't mean I believe that's going to happen that way, but I'm going to show you what could be and that at the end of the show, there's a little glimmer of hope because someone's got that punch club in their hand and they're going to beat that feral dog down and survive. You know, That's my job is to be a low art traveling gypsy. That's all I am. Wow, for a f man of such talent and genius and craft, I can't believe you frame yourself like that. Oh, it's not derogatory. I like being a low artist. It, I, I know the puppeteers who sit around and go, oh yes, I've really, <laughs> darling, I've turned it into this, th oh my God, how many Tonys do I have now, darling? <laughs> no, I don't want to be that guy. My, this guy stands on stage, a really shy prairie boy from Medicine Hat, 
took the weirdest job. I stand in front of strangers every night and I play with dolls. And they sit there and they participate with their silence and their reaction and their thought. So I'd rather be the gypsy wagon and keep moving from town to town telling those stories, you know. I would But that's you the inheritor and the conscious inheritor of an ancient form. Absolutely. Who you learn from your predecessors purposely by turning up on their couches when you were young and carrying it forward. Yeah. And and it really always about was about what do you what do you got to say? You know, at the end of the day it wasn't about how pretty are your dollies or how clever are you. For all the years I've tried to be clever. Right. It was about what do you got to say? You know, another great story. I I, I have to tell you this in terms of this. Uh, I told you my definition of art earlier that I borrowed and kept, but you know, same guy who other than my dad was the most influential person in my life. Um, told the story of a little girl who was drawing one day and she uh, had drawn a circle with two little dots in it. And her mother came by and said, uh, what is that? And she said, um, mom, that's the face of God. And the mother said, oh dear. No one knows what God looks like. And the little girl drew a slash mouth and put the pencil down and said, now they do. That's art to me. You just show them what the face of God looks like every night in your current incarnation, you know? So I'm just saying, this is what we look like right now. This now is didn't you make God as a raving street person in one of yeah. your shows? Uh, well, it was like, you know, <laughs> what if he actually was already here? What if he was hanging out with us and we ignored him, you know? I mean, the whole point of Penny Plain is, I honestly think, we're already in heaven. I really do. I think this is heaven. Everybody's worried about the afterlife or, you know, all the virgins waiting for them in the afterlife or, you know, you're going to live in this mansion in the sky. You know what? I, I think we kind of got the garden. I think we're here. <laughs> this is it, you know? So uh, why would you squander your time here and, and squander the thing that sustains you, which is the planet? So that's all I wanted to say is, you know, I, th I think these characters are already in heaven.